than meets the eye. Autobots wage their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase we're going to be looking at the 1988 Series 5 Autobot Pretenders. So what we'll do with this video, we're going to have a quick look at them in all of their modes. I'll show you how they all actually hide inside the Pretender shells. We'll look at all the accessories that come with them. I'll point out things that you need to be aware of if you have to purchase some for yourself. And as I'm lucky enough to have a couple of different types of packaging, we can have a look at the artwork and the battle scenes on the back of that. Okay, let's get started. I'd like to thank everybody who's watching these videos and just also to remind you that if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button for me now because it really does help this channel and myself out a lot. Thanks very much. So let's start with the left hand side. We've got Cloud Burst. In the middle, we've got Wave Rider and then to the right, we've got Landmine. Now, the reason why I've got these three and again, I know I sound like a broken record and I apologise to everybody else. But in the UK, these were the only three we got in 1988. That's correct. So we didn't get Groundbreaker. We didn't get Sky High and we didn't get Splashdown. I don't know what the reasons were, but we just didn't get them. These were the ones that we had. Now, at the time, I was pretty much... I was still collecting Transformers, and I've mentioned this on a few of my other videos, but I wasn't overly impressed uh, with this particular line. But now, being an adult, looking back at them, I suppose you've got a bit more of appreciation for them because there's quite a bit of, you know, engineering gone into the fact that they can actually fit a little robot inside the shell. And what I'm going to do now is just pretty much show you exactly where that is. So all these three robots, they've all got the same... Uh, basic principle and basic sort of accessories. So we've got the shell at the back where we can just carefully pull apart. And then there's space there where you'd get the robot. I'm not gonna fully do it, but you get the robot. You can fold the arms back, fold the toes up. If I take this out quickly. In fact, I might as well while I'm here. And turn him around. There we go. And then he fits inside the shell. So, very basic. Um, I think it looks quite quite cool now, as I say. Now, the main reason why I now like them so much is because of the boxes from the artwork that you can see above you. Now, unbeknownst to myself, as a nine-year-old boy in 1988, in Japan, they had something, they had a cartoon series known as Super God Master Force. Obviously, the cartoon, the Sunbow ones, had finished in the UK and the US way, way before that. But in Japan, they carried on with the cartoons. And they were a huge part of the Pretenders, to be honest, inside the cartoon. And when you watch them, you do get more of an appreciation for them. So let's have a quick look at Cloud Burst's inner robot. You've already seen I've just transformed him to be able to put him in the shell. Um, they are very basic. You've got some wings hidden on the back. You need to look out for stickers and the paint apps there. The head actually does rotate and the arms actually do rotate up and down slightly back, even though that's just part of the transformation. And then the legs move at the waist and the knees and a little bit at the toes. So even though it's super basic, it's actually really quite articulate. Now, all the weapon again, the reason why these are quite similar is because all of the shells come with, he's going to stand, come with a belt to basically hold the two shells together. You've got holes there either side and you've got tabs either side of the actual outer shell. So, of course, Cloudburst is blue, Wave Riders is white, and Landmind is grey. They've also all got helmets, like so, which you can see, which all fit on the top. And to be honest, these are probably the bane of most of these figures, because when you put these on, it will, 90% of the time, and during time, damage the back of the shell. See that there? We've got paint removed from the back, where the helmet's held on. So that's something to be aware of, and it happens a lot with these figures. Um... They also then come with a weapon for the, yeah, for the shell and then a weapon for the actual inner robot. So with Cloudburst, it's the long whip, which you saw me take out first. So I'll just attach that back in. This can get broken quite easily, to be fair, damaged and snapped. Um, I'll clip the belt back on while I'm here. You can just see exactly as I said, it'll fit over these tabs like so. And then you've got another weapon which can be held by the little robot with the Cloudbursts is this. So you've got the small dowel at the bottom, which can go in the little robot's hand, 
or the bigger dowel under there, which can go in the large in the shell's hand. But the other thing is, this weapon also doubles up for when it's in the other mode. I'm just going to pop it as a gun in the inner robot's hand for a start. And then if we look at the transformed, transformed, transformed uh, mode of Cloudburst, you can clearly see we've just folded the legs back up, turned the head around, folded the feet flat, and then pulled the wings out of the back. This is the weapon which I've just put in his hand. I've now attached to the bottom. And you've got quite a cool little alternate mode there, even if it is very, very basic. There we go. Right, before we move on to the others, let's have a look at some of the packaging because you might find this quite interesting. Before we get there, here's the instruction book. So you've got the new font of Transformers there. You've got the inner robot, and then it's all black and white, and then it's red spotted because it's Autobots. There we go. So there's the shell, and there's the inner robot. Right. Before we get to the Japanese one, let's look at the Hasbro version. I'm going to pop this down. So, this is your standard Hasbro box. There's another shell inside there. I've obviously just took the robot out to display. There's the, although again, basic toy, but very brilliant artwork of the Pretender with the robot coming outside and the transformed. Interesting thing, I suppose, with this is just how white they've made, or maybe the prototype was, whereas obviously the actual toy is... Um, more of a grey colour and also the nose oh no it is black it's there it just looks slightly different there we go so let's have a look at the back and this is what's quite important because again when I was a child I just looked at the back of this and this was the as my known the pretenders and of course the power masters battle scene and there you've got as we knew power master optimus prime and there of course is landmine summer order etc etc but in japan this was the super god master force artwork and he was known as jinrai or super jinrai and i'm not going to go into too much detail but it was just a whole different story and again a brilliant brilliant set of cartoons right so the takara box is here this is sealed so i won't be taking him out but i'm just going to show you how cool these are so they changed his name to phoenix and that will be obviously because Let's have a look. It looks like the sort of a phoenix on his helmet, which is a cool little thing there. And if I take the box, so the boxes are much more smaller, much more compact. And then a bit like the Decept sorry, a bit like the clones, both Autobot and Decepticon, you've got this fold out flap. There's the figure inside. And then you've got this lovely scene. And I suppose it's like a schematics on the inside of the flap. And it does exactly there what it says let's spin it round you've got the exact same battle scene but again this is the super god master force artwork there we go and there's his tech spec or spec chart as it's known but they changed his name to phoenix as you can see right moving over to wave rider again we won't need to spend as much time because we've looked at the main part but the interesting thing with this is on the Hasbro versions, and again, I've taken this off. You can see the hair has got all the paint chippings. He's got like the, I suppose it's blondy, very, very light brown hair. I might as well do this while I'm here instead of waiting to pick up the packaging. This again sealed as well, so I've got to be super careful. But his hair is now dark brown. So that's one thing that they did change. And of course they changed his name to Diver. We'll have a quick look at the box in a second, but there's your shell. Same principle, the belt attaches either side. You've got an axe, the larger weapon for the pretender shell. That gets damaged so, so easily on the main handle. I've seen that damaged so many times. I'll clip the helmet back on. So the actual robot inside, again, in Japan, is known as Diver, not Wave Rider. And you've got the same principle with the weapon. This weapon can be in the small hand with the dowel there, large hand there, and you can attach it to when it's in its vehicle mode in a second so there is the robot again super basic all the same movements these are pretty much identical apart from this one goes out instead of backwards and forwards let's just attach the gun back inside let's have a look at the alternate mode there we go so as i've said instead of the legs folding back they folded around the side we folded the feet in pull these two little wings out of the side of the leg shall we say we've pushed the head down so you've now got like the rotor blades there and then here is of course the large gun 
fitting into the top there. Quite a cool little alternate mode. And I think the good thing about these is the old, you know, the names of the figures, like obviously even Wave Rider and even Diver, you know, the name gives you an idea of what the actual figure is. So let's have a look at the, oh, well, let's do the Takara one first. Not Takara, the Hasbro one. So there's the Hasbro packaging. And again, you can see clearly in there, you've just got the blondish hair. There's the lovely artwork. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a tear in the middle there. That's all exactly the same. But there you can see the transformation with the legs going around. And then if we spin it to the back, there, of course, is that lovely battle scene again. And there's his tech spec. So quickly on to the Takara one. And the Takara again was the Japanese version. The numbers on these, by the way, you've got C, which stood for Cybertron. 203 was its corresponding number. 202 was uh, Phoenix. 200 is Diver. And 201 was Metal Hawk. I've done a video on him. He was a Japanese exclusive. But let's have a quick look at this again. There is the lovely fold-out schematics and picture of stroke artwork. And there is again, you will see he's got different coloured hair. Lovely. Right, before we move on to Lander, because there's a couple of stories about him, I've got another Wave Rider box, but this is a French and Dutch dual language one, hence the language underneath there. So these are exactly the same. There's nothing any different. It's just the language used on the box you can see there. And of course, in the tech specs as well. There you go. So that's, as I said, French and Dutch dual language. Right, so let's move on to Lander. Uh, sorry, I'm calling him by his Japanese name. Land Mine. And yeah, the reason why I was calling him Lander and the reason why he's a bit special is in Japan, he was a mail away only figure. So you had to, like with the robot points and like with the Omnibots and Reflector and stuff in, uh, you know, the US, etc. That's what you'd send off for. But for them in uh, Japan, you could send off for this guy. This guy was called Lander in there. He's got a large sword. Again, he's got the large belt, which holds the shell together. And of course, he's got the helmet as well. All exactly the same. Now, the good thing about this is I've got one which isn't the greatest at all, but it's a perfect example of how sun fade can affect and damage your figures. You can notice that straight away, the yellowish fading. Well, not fading, the yellowish. It looks all dirty and grimy, doesn't it? That's, and this is incredibly loose joints. Watch this. <laughs> there you go. So this guy's had a bit of play, play time in his, in his history. But this is the robot. Again, quite cool, really. Looks really good. He's got this weapon, which, there we go. You've got, you can hold it on either of the two little dowels or the large dowel there. And again, for the articulation, shoulders move all the way around. And this one, as you've seen, the legs move back. This guy's got some wheels on him, though. So let's see if I can get him to stand up. Obviously, with the weapons forward, it does make him a bit top heavy. So you can attach that there. And then, of course, fold the legs back as well, like so, with the arms up. So there's his alternate mode. Quite basic, but it does what it says on the tin. And again, perfect example there of what overplayed with and sun faded figures can look like. So let's have a look at the, so the Japanese instructions. Instead of being the fold out there, these fold out as a square. Everything else on it will be exactly the same. Just showing you the pieces that you've got. There's literally nothing on the back, which you can see. And then the box, this one's opened. But there we go. So you've got number 200 and he is Lander. It's a bit sun faded, but as I've just said, it is a mail away only figure. And nothing else is any different. They're all exactly the same. There's the transformation. There we go. And I know I've mentioned it a couple of times already, but it's definitely, if you've not seen it, there's episodes on YouTube. You can buy the DVDs. I don't know if you can buy Blu-rays Blu yet of the Super God Master Force cartoon. It is definitely worth a watch, even if it's dubbed or you're watching it with subtitles. But it does give you a whole new appreciation for these figures. So there we have them. Um, I hope it brought back some nice memories for you if you had them as a child. Um, if you didn't know much about them, because again, a lot of people sort of left the Transformers fandom 
after the movie or whatever and some people are actually quite surprised that these are actually transformers but there you have it they actually are they were all released in 1988 and they are as i've just said the generation one first lot of autobot pretenders so thank you very much for watching thanks for your comments and your feedback and please take care thanks for watching like and comment and don't forget to subscribe